building use form for the building and use requests as outlined in Northern School District Policy 707. Uh, the International Fair Committee to use the Jonestown Elementary School on March 21st, 2019 at 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. The snow makeup day is March 28th, 2019. And also as well, motion to approve the item 9.2, summer work crew to approve the crest to run the summer work crew program with his 10 students in mind at seven dollars and 25 cents per hour at the rate. Second. Discussion on those consent items? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, Director Murray, curriculum please. Motion to approve 10.1 student requests. That the approval of the request for the following students, currently 11th graders to graduate in June of 2019. The students would be Ashley Kreiser and Amara Underwood. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Extracurricular Committee, Director Klein is unable to be with us this evening. Um, Director Brewer, would you be comfortable filling in for Extracurricular Committee unless he already uh, made arrangements? <laughs> Some of that's fine. Here we go. Item to approve, 11.1, softball uniforms. Approve Northern Lebanon softball uniforms at total at a cost of $3,478. And the amount included in the budget. And that's including uh, numbering and everything with the screen printing. As well as 11.2, the coaches. Approve Dylan Sechrist as a volunteer junior high wrestling coach. And 11.3, information, as in Northern Lebanon field hockey team received the academic team award with a combined GPA of 3.56. Well done, girls. Do I have second? Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Human Relations Committee, Director Erdman, please. I motion items 12.1 through items 12.6. Second. Discussion? <clears throat> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Assistant Superintendent's report. I have a report per se, just like to make a quick statement here. Um, this evening, on behalf of the Northern Lebanon Faculty Administration staff and students, I'd like to recognize our school board directors. If you don't know this, it's School Board Director Recognition Month. Uh, that's why you see these little gift bags up here in front of our directors. Um, every January, we take time to celebrate, recognize the challenging and vital work they do on behalf of our students, families, and community. School directors volunteer an average of 10 hours each month. The board work, which includes adopting policy, voting on budgets, approving curriculum, choosing textbooks, reviewing hiring decisions, and then a few items. They take time to learn about the issues affecting public ed and to seek innovative solutions. As unpaid, locally elected officials, school directors are investing in their communities. There are neighbors, there are friends, there are local leaders, parents, and engaged senior citizens. So during this month of recognition, please take a moment, share your gratitude for school directors' time, dedication, and effort year-round. The job they do is necessary to ensure our schools remain a pathway to promising future. I thank them personally for advocating on behalf of our collective interests, and most importantly, for making the success of our children their priority. So directors, on behalf of the NLSD staff here, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. If you weren't able to see in the audience, the cookie has a biking on. So, thank you. Uh, moving on to our reports of representatives, uh, career and technology. Director Klein is not here this evening. Director Brewer, do you have anything to report? No, I do not. Okay. Uh, intermediate unit, Director Murray. I do not have a report for the month of December, but our IU meeting this month of January will be tomorrow evening, so I'll have a full report for you in February. Thank you. 
um, PSBA and legislative uh, representatives, Director Kelly. Um, I think just briefly, as I touched base last month, um, the Act 158 has passed for 2018. A little bit more information was that it will be effective beginning 2021-22 year. It creates options for students who are not proficient on the three keystone exams in Algebra 1, Literature, and Biology to meet the requirements to graduate. So we'll all be getting some information, but we do have some time before that is implemented. Thank you. Uh, public input items that are not on our, our agenda. We have a few submissions. The first one was submitted electronically. We have Stephanie Livingston. Mrs. Livingston, we have a four minute time period and we just ask that if you're talking about personnel that you refrain from um, names and individuals. Yep. Thank you so much. Yep. Uh, Stephanie Livingston, 258 East Chestnut Street, Jonestown. Um, first, thank you so much for hearing me tonight. I do appreciate it. I'm coming to you tonight to try and affect some positive change in our district. Um, over the past year, our family has really experienced some unfortunate instances that I'm going to try and condense into four minutes and share them with you. Most of them are in regards to lack of effective communication from me, coming from the district to the parents. Um, some of them are involving the course selection that occurred when we moved from, when the middle school moved to the new model that they're following. Um, it, re, it involved my children trying to select courses, and in doing so, the options of band and chorus were not available, to which I found when schedules came out, they didn't have band and chorus on their schedule. When I inquired as to where those courses were, I was told that chorus is offered period three, only period three, which is opposite core course. So my children had to decide were they gonna participate in chorus or core course. Unfortunately, we had to choose the core course. Band, thankfully, was offered during their flex period, so it didn't cause much of an issue. But the fact that we had courses like that competing in a student's day is something that really should be considered moving forward as we plan for the future. Secondly, um, the lack of communication that I found comes um, as a broad statement from administration back to parents regarding concerns that happened. There have been bus incidents that have happened with my children repeatedly this year. Unfortunately, I have not received consistent communication and follow-up regarding those instances. I've sent my children to the office to speak with administration to self-advocate, but I'm not receiving much feedback as a parent, which I think is really important that if you're trying to teach your child to advocate, that the parent gets some feedback from administration. Just to acknowledge, hey, I talked to your child, this is what's gonna happen. Um, along with that, um, I'm sorry, uh, was the incidents that just happened that you're aware of with my son Logan getting um, jumped in the boys' bathroom at school. Um, the really unfortunate part that occurred throughout the whole thing was the lack of communication again. The day that it happened at 9.30 in the morning, we did not get to speak with an administrator until noon which I find completely unacceptable, that on this campus there was not an administrator made available to us before then. Immediately following the incident, my son didn't get to speak to an administrator. I didn't. My father came to pick him up. My husband tried to call. When we called, nobody knew the school resource officer wasn't here that day, which again, lack of communication. Hmm. It took us numerous calls to get that handled. When I finally received follow-up from the school two weeks later after the email I sent, stating that I now understand why parents go to the press and social media to get answers from the school. When I finally received that follow-up, which I was very thankful to finally speak to people in person, um, I found out that administrators were not aware that this actually occurred in their own buildings. Hmm. This communication was bad. Um, Mike Koval, the resource officer, was not aware. I had to bring him up to speed so that he could help me contact PSP to make sure that this came to a close. And it, so the last bit, um, so that communication and lack thereof really led to a lot of bad feelings towards the district, toward the administration, that it's going to take a lot of time for us to work through. Um, along with that, I just want to quickly talk about busing in our district, because I know my time is very short. Um, we have a busing issue. I spoke with Mr. Zeller on the phone, finally, in regards to the issue that you're aware of on the bus. Um, but he told me that the school board has charged him with putting three students in a seat at the secondary level. This is inaccurate um, from what I gather from the um, NHT, the NTHS. I went on their website, I checked, I did my fact finding. 
It is recommended that all students in the school bus safely fit on the seat because that is how school buses are designed to keep our children safe. Please reconsider that recommendation to Mr. Zeller. Thank you very much for your time. Prior to calling our next, I do want to remind, um, if you're sitting in the audience, we do ask that you're respectful and quiet while the presenter is, is talking. We would, we would expect the same from you. Um, our next is Mr. Murphy, um, speaking on anything else. Andrew Murphy, 1828 Blacksburg Road, Anvil, PA. Uh, once again, same address I didn't move in the last few minutes. Um, and I actually have some more questions on, on the budget and the budget workshop that we had. Um, last month at the budget uh, workshop, Leanne said she was going to look into how much interest was received from the 500,000 health reserve that we have been setting aside for is it three years now um so I'm, I'm curious as to what that amount is um i would love to know um her 500 ways to cut costs because uh, i think as a community if we're all looking at the ways maybe we'll see some ideas that you guys haven't thought of and be able to suggest them to help work on this because this is our school district you guys are representing us the whole community for our kids, so we're in this together. Um, there was a question at the budget workshop for how many students in the V3. There's 55 students doing charter school. Some of them are in V3, some of them aren't. Um, and I believe it was brought up that V3 was less expensive um, for us for the cost and expense per student. So I'm curious how many students are in V3. Is there a way that we can increase that number of those 55 to lower our costs going out? Because we need to make cuts. Um, and uh, will the audit report that they just made um, and gave us, will the slide deck be on the website, available on the website for everyone to review? And will the actual audit report be available for everyone to review? Um, those are the main questions. I would like to know for the budget. It's just like their emails, they don't answer. I hear crickets. Thank you, Mr. Murphy. Our next is Mrs. Gundrum. Jean Gundrum, 56 Washington Avenue, Lebanon. So, I know I come up here all the time, and I talk about the same thing, about the bullying and the lack of communication, and it doesn't change, and I kind of feel like it's on deaf ears. Um, I do want to give a, a nice shout out to Mike Colville, who handled the situation this week like that, going directly through him, because when I called to find an administrator that day, nobody was here. They, uh, they sent me all around. I couldn't get a hold of anybody. I actually called the state police, and they, they handled it. So that's, that's horrible. Um, I've been hearing uh, a lot of discussions from different parents who've reached out to us, and there's a lot. Um, one parent told me there, she had a meeting about some issues with her child, and uh, our names were brought up in that meeting, including the fact that they feel some of the situations with our children are, are uh, made up. Mm. Um, that parent we don't talk to, I don't know her other than the messages through Facebook. To know that she knew information about my daughter um, upset me greatly. Uh, to, to say that um, maybe her child wouldn't get in as much trouble if she would uh, check the company she keeps um, to the parent about because the parent is 
you know, friends with our group. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about our group because uh, we get a lot of hate, which is fine. But over this Christmas break, I found out I was sick. Um, those people <laughs> were my backbone for those for that time. They even went and celebrated when I found out it wasn't the bad cancer. They've been amazing. When a parent needs help with their student or anything, they are there to listen. And they've tried to help. And when we call frustrated and we can't get through administration and I've had it, I call Lisa because I know Lisa's got some ideas or Arlo has some ideas or Tammy or Andrew or any of them. Like it's, it's sad that we have to reach out to other people because our administration is unavailable. And the issue with my daughter continues to know that I get nowhere with, with anything. And I know, Mr. Skozen, you say that we want to forget the past and move forward, but nothing is fixed yet from the past. Like everything that has gone on with my daughter is still there. And I'm worried that when those three months are up for her to come back, I'm gonna still have those same problems because that same bully that Hassler keeps forgetting about follows my daughters. And it doesn't yes, so. Please refrain from using okay. names. Okay, female principal. She, she talks about my daughter in meetings all the time, so. But it continues, like nothing has been done by that. Nothing gets done. And then these kids pay the price all the time. Do you realize that a Northern London student killed herself? Like, just a couple days ago. You know what she went through last year? That's horrible. It's horrible. And now me as a parent, I am dreading having my daughter go through anything else. And especially what we're going through right now as a family, it's the last thing I want to have to try to worry about. I mean, guys, somebody's got to wake up here and start to listen. And I have a high school problem and I'm being sent to Mr. Reese, who's middle school. I don't even understand that. So I just, I hope one day something happens here. And I think Mr. Skozen's great, but I also think that he has a very large load of things to do right now. And it's a shame that we were paying for a superintendent who uh, doesn't even answer emails or finish what he started. So that's all I have to say, but I hope one day something changes because <laughs> you guys aren't helping the kids. This is McCoy, Topic School. Lisa McCoy, I live at 445 South Lancaster Street. Unfortunately, I wasn't here for Mr. Colwall's um, presentation because my daughter was playing basketball. You know, the only team that um, includes her with her disabilities. Um, so um, it's my understanding, though, that we didn't talk about the safe to safe stuff, the stuff that's implemented and everything of that nature. So um, that's unfortunate. Um, the other piece is um, supposedly we have a brand new bullying policy, according to the state of Pennsylvania. Um, it's um, a, a bullying and a cyber policy that was presented um, via non-compliance issue that the state decided that Northern Lebanon was in non-compliance with. However, this has been revised in 2016 and still hasn't seen the light of day from this board or the board before it. And it has all kinds of wonderful adaptations and complaint forms and everything else in here. So that's kind of interesting, since how I've been told since 2016 we'd have a new bullying policy. Still at PCBA, being reviewed nine years later, set three years later. Sorry, my math sucks. Um, so I was told about policies and I brought up violations of policies. So I'm just gonna run them down for you so you can write them down. Um, policy 002, that's a board procedure policy that you are in complete violation of. Um, says that the superintendent shall have a seat on the board, not the assistant. Uh, let's see, there's, um, where's my list? Um, policy 104.1, where the superintendent is responsible to investigate and resolve all discrimination and disabilities to persons. Policy number 104, the board forbids discrimination against any student or staff person. The board will not tolerate discrimination of any student or employees. 
This policy extends to all educational and extracurricular activities. Policy, two, policy 002, which is a procedure policy by the board, where the board is responsible to establish and maintain and evaluate the educational programs within the district. Uh, policy 004, the superintendent shall attend all of the school board meetings to include executive sessions, unless it's discussing him. Um, so I'm asking, again, where is he? That's a violation of your policy. Policy 006, special meeting notice says that it needs to be 24 hours prior to the meeting, not after the fact. Um, let's see, that policy also says that um, we are supposed to be provided the information that was discussed in an executive session if there was a decision made and that was supposed to be made public. Um, policy 111, where that talks about that, sorry teachers, you're probably going to hate me. Um, it talks about the planning books to where it says that this building principal is supposed to inspect those. Um, violation of providing adequate direction for substitutes in more appropriate and meaningful education alternatives. I highly doubt that this is happening in study halls where we can't provide teachers to be able to teach the courses that we haven't approved. Policy 248, which is the traditional policy about the compliance officer and the investigation, and there's 15 days and they have to write an actual um, written document and provide it to the accused, the complainant, and the compliance Thank officer. You, Ms. McCoy. Is that all of our public input? Okay, that concludes public input. Moving on to um, any new business. Um, we have some FYI information on there. I would like to first thank, thank you for recognizing the board for this month um, to administration and to Mrs. Martin for her help in that as well. Um, I would like to remind if you are recording, we, we certainly welcome recording and posting, but we do want to remind once the meeting uh, is adjourned that all recording needs to cease. Um, without permission of the individuals and um, the board met in executive session for purpose of solicitor interviews on 1-8 from 5-30 to 6-30 and on 1-15 from 6 to 6-30. That is all of our information. Meeting is adjourned. Oh, sorry. We will also meet in executive session following this meeting to discuss personnel issues. Meeting is adjourned.